Everybody, Settler we're here at Robot in 30 Hours here at uh, Homestead Robotics. We got four fantastic teams that are going to be showing off their robots and their progress so far. We're only about what seven hours in, something like that, and uh, many more hours to go. But it's great to check in with these teams, see what they've done so far, and what they've been able to accomplish uh, here in just a short period of time. And we have uh, Great Scott right here. I remember you guys cheering. It was always Great Scott, right? Something like that. And uh, they're going to be talking about their progress so far. Chat, if you got any questions for them, by the way. Uh, please type it in chat. We'll have some giveaways in between each team as well, too. But, Grace Scott, we're going to start off. You guys got quite the chassis assembled already with some mechanisms as well, too. Why don't you introduce yourselves uh, and let us know what you've done so far. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks brings a full suite of options that are free for first teams to download, including SolidWorks Cloud CAD apps for any device with a browser, and SolidWorks for Windows, where you can connect SolidWorks to the cloud for collaborating and managing data. Get it all for free at SolidWorks.com first. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Uh, my name is Josh. My name is Sherwin. My name is Landon. My name is Brady. And we are great, Scott. 7974. So tell us more about your robot. What have you guys uh, assembled so far? What's some of your strategy behind what your robot is? Uh, so, so far, because this is a time thing, you know, we have the 30-hour limit, what we decided to do is recycle the chassis from last year's challenge, Freight Frenzy. Um, we already had it pre-built. We were able to just take everything off and essentially re-kit it, especially since we already had the lift from our robot last year. Um, yeah, so we were working, we were specifically working on the claw, and so we 3D printed uh, all the parts uh, for the claw. Yeah, and our um, our robot will have a claw mechanism that raises it, and it can close in on the cones. So I know we don't have that all wired up yet, but can you kind of just show us like how that slide is going to work? Like, can you manipulate and move it by hand? Of course. So first. Uh, opens and closes, uh, picks up the cone, then it'll raise up along this lift, turn over, and then because the cone would be upside down at this point, we have a servo that corrects it. Then the claw would open again, drop the cone onto the low, medium, or ground tower. Well, there's not really ground tower, but you know what I mean. And then it would reset. So when you guys are looking at uh, designing for robot in 30 hours, how you know obviously it's going to be different than what your finalized robot is, right? How did you kind of just say, hey, like you know these are maybe some things that we can do within 30 hours? And then were there any ideas that you came up with that you're like, hey, that's not feasible, we can't do in 30 hours? Um, originally we thought of using linear stringed slides, but as we have no experience with them, uh, that we've used them in the past, we decided to not use them, especially since we already have. A lift system in place and they would just be we wouldn't be able to get them running in 30 hours and how about from the cloppers whose idea was the claw on the robot i think that i don't remember whose idea that was well, it looks like it might have been his but tell us i just love to hear more about like why did you choose to go to claw route uh why why do you think in the 30 hour time frame that was a realistic thing for you to do um well so with the claw, it's easiest to drop the cones and pick them up. So that was our thought process. And then it, was, it wasn't just my idea. It was everybody's sure. collective thoughts. So looking at it from a cone-wise, like from an objective standpoint, is there anything else other than cones you're looking at doing? Are you going to try to do any of the other objectives on the field as well? What are the other objectives? Oh, we got the circuits and stuff. You got to read up on the manual, man. So I, I, I do. Yeah. All right. So well, the, the good reminder for chat to make sure you are reading up on that. You know, we got circuits and other areas to do uh, as well, too, on the on, on the field, I guess. So uh, we just talked about stacking cones. Wasn't sure if you looked at anywhere else on the field or considered possibilities for that as well. Um, when you guys first saw this game challenge, like, what was your reaction to it? Did you guys uh, think it's a cool game so far, what you've experienced, or uh, what was kind of your gut reaction? So at first it sounded like really um, 
like I don't know, dramatic, like making a robot in 30 hours. But so far, it's pretty fun. Everything what he just said. <laughs> yeah, I at first I thought I was like a little confused by the challenge, but as it went along, it seemed more like easier and easier to complete. So what are kind of some next objectives we look at going after we get done here and going through the night? Where do you guys want to be by tomorrow morning? Uh, by tomorrow morning, we certainly want to have the robot completely programmed and polished up. And hopefully by tomorrow morning, we'll be in complete shape to begin work or continue working on an autonomous program. Tell me what you're looking at doing for programming as well, too. Uh, for programming, we certainly want to do the image recognition. Uh, we'll be using V4A and TensorFlow, a combination of that with a webcam to do that. Um, for the movement on the field, I'm planning on using Roadrunner and three encoder um, adometry is T265. Awesome. And of course, Chad, if you got any questions for these teams, uh, a lot of times the questions come after teams leave. So we'll bring, if, uh, if there are questions after Great Scott is done, for Great Scott, we'll bring them back on a little bit later uh, as well too. But uh, Great Scott, anything else that you want to uh, talk about or show off on your robot at all before uh, we bring on our next team? Um, I have nothing. All right, sounds good. Well, great, Scott. Good luck uh, the rest of the way. We'll of course see your reveal uh, tomorrow. So can't wait to look. Uh, can't wait to see more of that, and look forward to that as well too. So this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you, and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. SolidWorks brings a full suite of options that are free for FIRST teams to download, including SolidWorks Cloud CAD apps for any device with a browser, and SolidWorks for Windows where you can connect SolidWorks to the cloud for collaborating and managing data. Get it all for free at SolidWorks.com slash FIRST. Special thanks to Team 8680, Cracking Pinion for hosting Robot in 30 Hours and also to their sponsors.